Six months ago, I had 10 solar panels and a 10 kilowatt hour battery system fitted to my east roof here in Derbyshire. This video is gonna be looking at what the payback's been so far, but also some important lessons that I've learned from having solar panels fitted on my roof. The data we'll be looking at will be from August 2023 to January 2024. If you want to follow along with this data and the spreadsheet I'll be using, it's at evnick.com forward slash solar. It'll make more sense if you actually listen to the video because we're going to be going through what every paragraph means and what each part of the system means. Now it's been installed by Heatable the system and Heatable are unique. They're one of the few national installers that let you get an instant online quote on your solar panel system for a fixed price. Now you can go to evnick.com forward slash heatable and on the website you put your postcode in answer a few basic questions about your energy use draw your own roof and then you're presented with an online price that is fixed on that system you can take away a few panels if you want add a few panels more but they also give you the option of adding then a battery they'll give you a price for that now if that battery is not the battery you want, Heatable do offer some other battery systems and I'll be showing those system prices on my video and on that spreadsheet if you are interested in wondering what they are. Now the system I've got is very unique off Heatable. They use REA bifacial panels. I've got 10 of them plus 10 microinverters. I've done another video with Heatable explaining why they've used them if you want to check that out. But when I first got the system, my very first lesson was very quick. We only got a five kilowatt hour battery installed with the Alpha and I very, very quickly learned that I needed 10 kilowatt hours. Now, if you're watching this video and you're getting quotes for five kilowatt hour, my advice would be that you'll likely need at least a 10 kilowatt hour battery. I'd very be surprised if anyone could get away with just five kilowatt hours. It, yes, it will reduce your bills, but it'll cost you a lot more to install another five kilowatt hours later. So do it straight away at the same time and it will save you a bit of money in obviously in install costs and also not having engineers back out. Now if we go ahead and look at the spreadsheet that I've made, I'm trying to work out what the return of my investment is. So basically how much money the system has cost me and how quickly I'll return that investment. Basically the money I've spent, how soon will I get the whole money back? Now it's very hard to calculate precisely for me because of various things that I do. Now I'm on Octopus Intelligent, which is a special two peak tariff system. So I pay 30p peak and seven and a half off peak. Now the date of the first column that we see there is the house use. Now the house use doesn't include what it's cost me to charge the battery, but it does include EV charging and general house use. Now because there's also EV charging in there and I get that cheaper and I've also been charging the alpha battery um, as well, I can't really use my Octopus bill to guess what the average peak rate is so I've guessed at a rate of 21p that should give a good balance between EV charging and house demand now the next bit we have my octopus bill now the octopus bill is how much I paid octopus pre-standing charge so no standing charge or VAT is included in that bill and how much I've taken from the national grid so how much energy I've physically taken from the national grid to also use my car, charge my battery. Because like I said, I'm gonna be charging the alpha battery to full. And this is where we get into one of the other lessons in a minute that I've learned about using the system to maximize my returns. Now we have the generation tab. Now the generation tab is the amount of solar generation that the Enphase system has made in solar power. We then have the total amount of power that's gone back to the national grid. And then Octopus pay me for that power back. So then we have the amount that they've paid me for that export. Finally, we have the running totals, which is the Octopus bill cost me after they paid me for the export. So basically any money that I got paid, I paid them minus the money they paid me back for exporting. And then finally, we have the money that we've saved. Now, as mentioned earlier, my alpha battery started with a five kilowatt hour battery. And as we can see in the spreadsheet from September, my savings were increased. That's because the other five kilowatt hour battery got installed by Heatable, which means I had 10 kilowatt hours of storable power. Now, Octopus also changed the way they pay for solar export. It went from 5p to 15p. Now, I've used 15p for the whole spreadsheet, but when it changed to 15p, the way I used my energy completely changed. What I ended up doing was charging my battery to 100% every night so I could maximize the amount of solar energy I could export from when it was being generated. In fact, if you have a big differential between the off-peak and your export, you should do this to get the maximum payback for your battery. Now, because I charge my battery to 100% every single night, my peak demand is next to nil. 
And why I say next to nil, it could be less. And the reason it's as high as it is, is because I have an electric shower in our ensuite, which me and my wife prefer to shower on than the bath, uh, which actually runs off the boiler. But we shower off the electric shower, which means I'm importing a little bit of peak power during running that shower. Now, if I didn't use the shower, I'd use pretty much zero, zero peak energy, which means all my uh, energy would be at 7.5p. Now, because of the electric shower, the battery still supports some of the export and sometimes some of the solar is being generated at the same time, meaning that my average unit rate has been 9.66p per kilowatt hour. Now, that is ridiculously low. So if I change to a heat pump or anything like that and or start using my shower differently, that unit rate should drop even further. But there's some other things that you can do with the alpha battery that I'll tell you in a minute that can really, really improve the payback time that the solar and the battery will generate together. Now for calculating the savings in the spreadsheet, I've took off what I paid for the bill and then took off what the energy would have cost me if I paid for it at the 22p estimated rate in the spreadsheet. This gives me an idea of savings and also gives me an idea of working out what the payback is currently for this system. Now being in the Northern Hemisphere, the data that I had over August and January are the worst performing months. It's winter here in the Northern Hemisphere, if you're not aware, and that means that we have less sun, the sun's not an ideal angle, and also because I have an east roof, there is less sun rising up in the east, which means I get overall less peak generation from the angle that my panels are positioned at. However, even with this, I was averaging £69 a month savings, which means just under 14 years of payback. But we can see that my savings actually increased into some of the winter months, and by January, they really rose up. And that's because I'm fully optimized on how to use the system now, charging the battery up fully and maximizing the off-peak energy from Octopus Intelligent. Now, I think by the time we get into summer, I'm gonna even maximize this even further, beating the 80 pound I've got as the highest figure already. And I reckon I'm gonna be past 100 pound a month in savings by the time we get to summer, which will mean that my payback will be well under 10 years. Now the Alpha battery when I first got it, I did a review of it up there if you want to see it, but I was really impressed with the build quality and the sort of designs of the system. But one thing that really let it down for me was the inability to allow export from the battery to the grid. Well, guess what? That's completely changed. Alpha now let you export, forced export from the battery back to the grid. And they let you do that even if you've not joined one of their DFS partners. We'll explain what DFS in a, in a, in a minute is because allowing forced export means that you can increase your savings on Alpha, not just with DFS, but also with some other methods. Now, allowing forced export means that you've got these extra methods to make extra money from your battery. Now, for me, I've got a 7.5p off-peak import rate and a 15p export rate, which means that if I've got a full battery at the end of the day, I wanna force that energy back to the grid, so I've got an empty battery to then re-import again. I'm making 7.5p on that energy by put, taking it back for the grid and sending it back, that it's well worth me doing this. Now, what I would advise you do is possibly even look at going on Agile, which is an octopus tariff which pays, uh, gives you different import and export rates, but you can actually go on Agile and have intelligent import, which means you can import for 7.5p, but you can export when the grid needs it, which might be five and six o'clock, and you could be paid a lot more for that. But even being paid 15p, you could force the export to your battery and ask it to stop at 20%, which might hopefully be enough to cover you to the end of the day. If not, you can set it to a different percentage, but there's other methods which can pay about three pound a kilowatt hour if you export at the right times, which means with a 10 kilowatt hour battery, you can make 30 pound just in one sitting. Now, Heatable offer various systems, so I thought I'd display everything that I could have had, but which I didn't go for, and then I'll explain what I went for on the price. So if I just went for 10 panels, no battery, it would have come in at 6995. If I went for a five kilowatt hour give energy battery, which I'm, I'm telling you is not big enough, it's 9795. And if you went for an 11 kilowatt give hour energy battery, it comes in at 10995. And if you went for a give energy all in one battery, that's 13.5 kilowatt hours of battery storage, that comes in at 13794. But if you want a Tesla Powerwall 2, they also offer that at 14.794. Now I went for the Alpha battery, that's a 10 kilowatt hour system, and that comes in at 11.455. 
Now, heatable are very rare, the fact that they offer so many various options of batteries compared to other suppliers. And I wanna work with heatable more, so if you'd like to generate some business towards them, please go to evnick.com forward slash heatable if you are after a quote or after getting solar and you are after any of those battery systems because I think it's very rare that so one company will offer so many different systems and is trained, got their engineers trained on all these systems. So let me know what you think, which one would you go for out of all those batteries? Now, before before I tell you how to earn three pound a kilowatt hour by exporting your power and when to do it, let's first summarize what I've learned. First of all, you need at least a 10 kilowatt hour battery. That's my first bit of advice I give you. Second piece of advice, make sure you're on a real decent energy tariff that has a cheap off peak rate, but offers more to export it. Now, Octopus Energy is my preferred company. Go to evnick.com forward slash energy. There's a code to join Octopus. You'll split a hundred pound with me and you don't need an EV for all their tariffs. They do solar only tariffs. They do battery tariffs. There's a variety of other tariffs at Octopus that offer you really good, cheap, off-peak import and pay you a really decent export. So that's the first thing I'd get to go and have a look at. The next thing, you wanna make sure you're charging that battery to 100% as much as possible to make sure you maximize the export and then discharge that battery near the end of the day to maximize the amount of energy you're sending back to the grid and maximizing the amount of payback. Now, I've earned just under a hundred pound over this winter, extra on my export by doing the grids, national grid demand response, that's DFS. The, basically the grid at times needs a little bit of energy back and by exporting your battery during these certain times and saying that you're able to do it, the grid will pay you up to three pound a kilowatt hour. Now to find out more, I did a video just about it here, but if you're wondering how I got my 10 phase uh, microinverter system installed, then see the install video I did with Heatable here.